last part here. Um, this is an article that I wrote uh, early last year, and it was basically addressing the yeah different scenarios that very yeah my opinion, especially live players. I mean, very very few live players are aware of. Um, a lot of old school players aren't even aware of this kind of stuff, and um, it just kind of goes to show sometimes knowing the stats, sometimes knowing the math is detrimental because um, you're very often more likely to make moves um, that uh, others won't because you know the unlikelihood of players hitting certain flops, uh, etc. Um, and so this is how this is how it was, and this I think is a very good way to wrap this video up um, and to give you a uh, kind of a summary of um, yeah the the probability of you hitting certain flops hard with certain preflop holdings and how uh, certain boards can be quite deceptive um, pertaining to your opponent's potential holdings and how. Yeah, sometimes when you hit, for example, as we just saw, you know, top pair, top kicker with that ace jack that our that our friend had here, that the opponent had against our flop set, um, when he then flops, or when then he then turns the uh, the third jack, completes his set, it actually makes our full house. So um, this, anyways, this is a this is an excerpt from that article. It's uh, everyone's heard the old adage, hold is a game of implied odds, but very few have listened. Uh, your hand is highly determined by the flop, and that's even more so true in Omaha. Okay, so there go. Knowing the statistical improbability of any flop, given your hand and opponent's estimated ranges, can end up costing your ass if you're wrong. Okay, highly unlikely, quote unquote. Example: an eight-seven suited versus a uh, pair of sevens. The flop comes out eight-eight-seven, equals potentially expensive as hell. Especially when, especially with effective deep stacks, all right, and large yeah, turn into a river calls against loose weak passive opponents, and of course also against the loose aggressive shark who can read your rigid, uncreative, tight aggressive style like an open book. Lags, for example, so-called lags, loose aggressive players, they make their money um, in the long run with these kind of hands. You know, sevens, suited connectors, match stretch, um, suited aces late, plain in position, uh, over calling, cold calling, even, even sometimes call, cold calling four bets um, when deep stacked. And, you know, they're, they're looking. I mean, they're, they're just waiting for these kind of these kind of scenarios and then these, you know, these very clear tags that are, you know, pushing, um, yeah, I mean, Pushing, you know, jacks are better, or raising jacks are better, ace king, you know, in early position, and never really yeah, leaving that range. It's one of those situations where when the lag then hits that flop hard like this, um, you know, that's when a lot of uh, the tags can't let go of over pairs. Um, we, you know, I myself, I mean, everybody I think has a hard time letting go of over pairs, especially um, versus cold callers. But the the idea of this article is to let you know that players who do cold call in position um, very often are banking on these kind of flops. They're cold calling with suited connectors, match stretch, small middle pairs. Uh, suited aces even sometimes, and you know they play on when they're when they've got the best of it, and they normally let it go when they don't, and that's the whole idea, and that goes back to uh, implied odds and reversed implied odds, right? From basically pre-flop to flop, uh, as we saw in some of those hands. So here are just a few stats: uh, when holding a pocket pair, um, you, you're going to hit trips are better on the flop, basically 7.5 to one. Uh, we had just reviewed all that. Uh, one in five. Pocket pairs hits trips by the river. Trips are better. Uh, when holding non-paired hold cards, only one in 29 flops is going to be two pair better. All right. So that means basically you're getting 28 to 1 odds to make that call if you're only banking on playing on if you're going to hit two pair better on the flop. Uh, hitting two pair with non-paired holdings, non-paired hold cards, again, uh, basically 49 to 1. Flopping trips 
with an unpaired uh, with unpaired whole cards is 73 to one. Uh, flopping at full house is again 1,088 to one, and flopping at four of a kind with a non-pair uh, whole card uh, or whole cards is then basically 9,000. What do we have here? 799 to one. Okay. When holding suited whole cards, uh, eight to one against flopping a four flush draw, uh, and 118 to one against flopping the flush itself. Now, one in 11 flops um, when holding suited hands. Uh, either flops a flush, flops a draw, and completes by the river, or flops two pair better. All right. So now here with the suited hole cards, you get. I mean, you know, you're getting better odds coming into the flop for either flopping that flush draw, right? Flopping the flush draw and completing by the river, or flopping two pair better. Okay. Um, that being said, when you're holding suited hole cards, you're only going to make the flush by the river one time in 16. Just heads up, suited, you know, is very often overrated. Um, when holding max, max stretch suited connectors, then you can start getting into, you know, calling and over calling in position uh, when late. But don't, I can only advise against playing max stretch uh, connectors, max stretch uh, suited connectors in middle and early position. It's just, you're gonna get you're gonna get pushed off too many uh, too many hands. You're gonna miss too often. But again, that being said, they are playable. They're very playable. And when they hit, you know, hard, um, you know, and, and no limit hold them, they really can be lucrative. Um, and you know, they're good to play also to in increase your range and for other reasons. So, in other words, we've got um, one in. 76.5 flops, right? When holding max, max stretch suited connectors, that means 4 or 5 to jack 10 uh, flops are straight. Uh, when, when one gapped, it's, it's basically 100 to 1 against. A 1 in 7.6, you're going to have hit a straight by the river. Uh, when you're one gapped, it's basically 8 to 1 against. Uh, and this is an interesting number here, this last one. So you're holding max, uh, max stretch suited connector again. One in four point five flops are two player two pair are better, right? Or you're gonna hit the straight or the flush by the river. So that's you know uh twenty two percent equity if you're banking on that alone. Um and that's why, you know, these max max stretch suited connectors also uh, also very often perform better against tighter ranges than higher holdings, for example, like ace nine. Uh, we are very often dominated. Um, especially important for tournament play, uh, just as a heads up. Um, following page is quite interesting here. It says stacks are lost with strong hands, quote unquote, yeah, top pair, top kicker are better against stronger, usually unexpected hands. So your top pair, top kicker on the flop, right, means let's say you know, you're playing big slick again and uh, flop either the king or the ace. Right, and this is how that breaks down. You're 95% behind the flop set on average. Okay, with top pair, top kicker. And if you played a lot of online hands, you're gonna know that, that when you when you run an analysis of your game, it's top pair, top kicker kind of hands, over pairs, uh, even sometimes two pairs, um, where you're losing potentially a good bit of money versus these. Uh, you know, unlikely sets and yeah, two pair plus kind of hands. Um, so, anyways, top pair, top kicker on the flop is 95% behind anybody who did flop the set. Okay, 80% 80, 80 behind an over pair. So, an example here is ace jack suited versus queens. The board is in the jack nine four. Top pair, top kicker versus that over pair, 80% behind. 75% behind the flop two pair. And look at this, you're even a coin toss, even with the flush, uh, flop flush draw against an overpair. So, example here is uh, Queen of Clubs, Queen of Hearts versus Ace of Diamonds, Jack of Diamonds, the board comes, Jack 9 4, right, suited. 48%, uh, 51% split. Another example, Aces versus Ace Jack. Pre flop matchup, basically 90 or 92% to the difference here. Board comes Jack nine four of diamonds, right? Look at this. All of a sudden, 
that Ace Jack here, right, has 43% equity. This came back from the dead based on that flop. Okay, and then here finally you're 56% behind 15 cleanouts. So again, here Ace Jack of Diamonds versus that 8 7 suited mat, uh, max stretch connector example. Board comes out uh, 6 9 of hearts, Jack of Clubs, right? So the 7 8 gives him basically. Uh, 15 ounce to the straight or to the flush, all right? And you know the 8.7 hasn't hit per se, but he's 56% ahead equity-wise. Okay, next section here: top pair, top kicker that trips up on the turn. We saw that here in one of the replays. 84% um, behind the opponent's completed full house. 80% behind a flop straight. 77% uh, behind a completed flush draw. Um, you should be able to see, of course, the flush draw. Sometimes a straight, uh, potential completed straight, is not so obvious. Uh, and we've got an example or two to prove that. Um, okay, top air, top kicker sucked out on the turn. Ace queen versus a max stretch here, suited connector, more or less 60 40 pre flop. Equity matchup uh, on the flop, you know, top air, top kicker, ace queen here. And this guy, you know, he hit middle pair here, right? And the flush draw. Okay, so this 8 7 suited is now a 0.2% favorite with this one middle pair plus the flush draw, right? Because he's got five outs here, right? For the two pair, and then all the diamonds for, um, yeah, for his, for his uh, flush draw. Turns now the 7 of spades. And this ace queen is not necessarily going to be thinking anything of that seven of, seven of spades. He's going to think it's a blank and just, you know, play on. So this eight seven is now an 84% favorite, right, on the turn. And with the miss flush draw and the miss straight draw, Mr. Top Pair Top Kicker donates his entire stack by quote unquote protecting his hand. All right. Again, equity swings. Okay. And all this ties into, of course, the pot odds you're giving your opponents. Um, as I was trying to illustrate there in the example hands in the replay. Um, these are a couple of the pitfalls you need to be really aware of. And of course with this scenario, you know, a flop set of threes is also here possible, right? It's also a flop set of eights. It happens. It really does happen. Um, but just to show you here, even with this, you know, also when you're on this side of the fence here, when, when you flop that middle pair with that flush draw, you know, you're, you're looking good equity-wise. Um, and you know you can even call a pot size bet cold um, for the turn card. All right. Top pair, top kicker example with the king queen here that hits top two pair on the turn. So this hand is going to be here 93% uh, behind a completed straight, 91% behind a flop set, 90% behind a completed flush draw. Over pair on the flop, 97% behind a flop flush. Um, again, very unlikely as we saw earlier. 96% behind a flop straight. 87% behind a flop set. That's that's much more likely. Uh, and 70% behind a flop two pair. And look at this coin toss again against 15 cleanouts. Okay, over pair suck that on the turn. Kings versus <laughs> your infamous suited uh, connector. Max stretch, 77-23 uh, matchup preflop, equity-wise. Flop comes again, queen 8-3, as we had above, but now it's not the ace-queen ace situation, but a, uh, you know, over pair. Uh, the 8-7 is now just behind 50% equity, all right? Uh, turns to 7, and now all of a sudden he's again 84% of the, 84% uh, ahead equity-wise. And again, with a missed flush roll, this over pair is going to protect hard and donate his entire stack by quote unquote protecting. Um, top two pair on the flop breaks down as follows. Again, uh, coin toss against 15 clean outs, even with top two. Okay. Uh, sets on the flop are, and this is very unlikely, 95.7% behind a flopped overset, 95% behind a pocket pair that flopped. The upper set of a full house. So this is an example where you have, for example, uh, suited ace versus pair of eights, and the seven seven eight comes. It's just unheard of, right? But this kind of stuff does happen from time to time, and in no limit hold'em, 
uh, as the adage goes, uh, it's a game of implied odds. So, you know, if you're playing the short stack strategy and you get it all in pre-flop, or yeah, any strategy for that matter, and you get it all in pre-flop, your equity is based, of course, completely and purely on the equity matchup at the point you go all in. If you're not pushing pre-flop, right, or at any given street, um, your equity is, of course, going to change based on the cards to come. Yeah, and that's why, you know, these implied odds of calling with uh, these max stretch suited connectors, um, middle and small pairs versus tight raises is in position very often a very lucrative play. I mean, maybe not in any given session, but, um, you know, a lot of these guys just aren't going to see this coming, right? I mean, I rarely do. Uh, and, you know, especially when you're multi-tabling or when you're, um, you know, you're playing unknowns, you don't have reads on the guys, you don't have stats on the guys. It's just, you know, it's just really, really hard. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of good players, you know, they, they use this kind of knowledge against other good players to push kings out of, uh, yeah, out of the pot. Right, and so it's yeah, it's it's really, really a tricky situation, and you know that's what makes poker so so beautiful and and so much fun, uh, also sometimes so aggravating. Um, and so you, you need to know this stuff, you need to be aware of it, and uh, yeah, definitely take all this to heart. Um, here, just finally here, I mean the article goes on, but we'll just we'll end it here. Uh, in most of these situations, uh, in most of the situations described above. You're normally way ahead pre-flop and way behind post-flop. Hence the implied odds of calling in position with pairs, suited connectors, and suited aces. Um, I've lost a mountain of cash here by not seeing the signs and or falsely believing that the opponent was bluffing post-flop. When weak, tight, or tight passive players bet, you should normally fold without the nuts or very strong nut draws. General tip, not always. Loose aggressive opponents also make most of their profit in this situation, so don't pay them off. Okay, we'll take a, a look at the, the rest of this article in the videos on Big Stack Strategy. And with that, guys, we've come to the end of our list. Actually, this, um, this video was actually planned to be quite short. Ended up, uh, in the end, being quite, uh, yeah, quite long. I hope, um, hope it wasn't too much, but it is so fundamental, um, this, this information here. Uh, definitely, again, have a look at these uh, websites here, especially this one, um, if that wasn't clear to you. And maybe, you know, review different parts of this video a few times until you really get um, fluent, so to say, with uh, working with pot odds and when you can make good calls, i.e. when your, your um, equity is greater than the percentage you need uh, to make that call. And hopefully it's also useful for even seasoned players um, to have a look at, you know, different scenarios where you do have actually quite enormous equity just based on draws and redraws that you may have previously been unaware of, right? Also, how you can incorporate uh, the various calculators that I've compiled and created myself into your online play uh, and also use them for your... Uh, post-session analysis, both um, online and live, right? Uh, again, um, being aware always of implied and reverse implied odds, knowing that Hold'em and especially Omaha um, are games of implied odds as such. Discounting those outs, you know, don't be drawing to second, uh, second nut flushes. Don't be, I mean, especially not in Omaha. Also, you know, don't necessarily on all eight uh, straight outs when you have two suited boards. You might want to drop a couple of those off uh, and only give yourself six outs for the straight draw because you don't want to end up making your straight including uh, two of the outs that are going to make somebody else's potential flush. Um, you know, discounting outs, playing positionally aware, uh, in position as often as possible, especially when you're playing your um, speculative hands, again, middle and small pairs, pocket pairs, suited connectors, maybe suited aces. Um, always, if possible, in position. And just know that when you're playing these kind of hands against 
relatively tight players, unimaginative players, that, given the implied odds, can pay off uh, big time in the long run. Maybe not in any given session. Over multiple sessions, if you review your your hands and see that you're actually yeah losing money there, it, it may be a potential leak. It just may be that you also haven't hit. Um, it may also be that you're you know making those moves against the wrong players in the wrong positions. So just be very honest with yourself. Analyze your game. Uh, be aware of all this information. And yeah, your your bankroll will definitely be growing in the long run. Each of these topics could be broken down into multiple videos. The idea of this series is, of course, again, to give you just the essential knowledge that you need to get started and get on your way. And then, of course, um, become a winner within seven days at at least the uh, mid and lower limits. The links that we provided there, the information that we've shared in this video, should definitely give you everything you need concerning pot odds. And of course, there's just a uh, wealth of information online uh, if any of those points weren't clear to you. Again, this is Dylan. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at any time. And check back in with us for the fourth video in the series, or the sub series here on Poker Math, where we're going to cover all the stats that you've been seeing here in the Hold'em replay, as well as going over the tournament and cash game calculators. Till then.